Meet Caden, Maisie, Bolu and Millie. We'll be following them across the series as they let us know what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. They invite us into their lives, at home and as they undergo treatment. Meet 11-year-old Maisie. Hello. Maisie lives with her mum, dad, brother and dog Poppy. She has celiac disease. It means that you can't have gluten, which is wheat, barley, rye, malt and oats. And as a result, Maisie is unable to eat everyday food such as bread, pasta and pizza. If I eat gluten, I end up getting the runs, I get sharp stomach pains, I feel sick and I just basically want to lie in bed and go to sleep. Maisie is so sensitive to gluten that everything food-related has to be separated to avoid her coming into contact with it. So I have my own ketchup and butter to make sure that no cross-contamination goes on there. We've started doing a lot more home cooking and baking since I've been celiac. So we make gluten-free chicken nuggets. We grated frozen gluten-free loaf and then we put it onto the chicken. It's lots of fun. Luckily for Maisie, there are also special gluten-free versions of some of her favourite takeaway foods. So we're watching a film and I've got a gluten-free pizza and Jess has a normal pizza because she's normal. So we're enjoying our sleepover. Find out how I get on next time. Bye! Ouch. Meet Caden, Maisie, Bolu, and Millie. We're following them across the series as they let us know what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. They're inviting us into their lives, at home and as they undergo treatment. We're catching up with 11-year-old Maisie. Hello. She has celiac disease, which means she can't eat gluten, found in wheat, barley and rye. So I'm going to make myself my lunch for school. I have um, some brownie, which I made last night, gluten-free. And I'm going to have some homemade gluten-free chicken nuggets that my mum did last night. Have a fruit salad and some cucumber. And a bag of crisps as well. And these are really good because they have the gluten-free symbol on them. Maisie's lunch is often different to her school friends because many things they eat contain gluten. So here's what Jess has got. She's got some crisps which I wouldn't be able to eat. This foil had a sandwich in it and I couldn't have had it because bread's not naturally gluten free because it has flour in it which has wheat in it which would make me really ill. So all I would have been able to eat out of this lunch would have been the banana. Maisie! It's important Maisie eats the correct food, so her body can extract energy from it like the rest of her class. So we've just eaten our lunch, we've come outside to play a big game of netball. Now if I'd have eaten something with gluten in my lunch then I wouldn't have been able to do this and I would have been stuck inside and probably waiting for mom to, my mum to come and pick me up to take me home so I could get back in bed because I wouldn't be feeling well at all. Find out how Maisie gets on next time when she visits her dietitian. Thanks for coming and visiting me in my school. Bye! Bye! Ouch. Meet Caden, Maisie, Bolu and Millie. We're following them across the series as they let us know what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. They invite us into their lives, at home and as they undergo treatment. We're catching up with 11-year-old Maisie. Hello! She has celiac disease, which means she can't eat gluten. I have a hospital appointment with the dietitian. She's the person who tells me if I'm doing my gluten-free diet correctly. And I'm really hoping that she'll have my blood result. If it's good, then I should be able to eat oats. So that's super exciting. Fingers crossed. Maisie has regular tests to detect the levels of gluten antibodies in her blood. She needs her blood count to have gone down for her to be able to eat those oats. This was just after you were diagnosed. Yeah. And you were just under 32. Today it was just under 64, so it's going up. So okay. it means that there's some gluten sneaking in somewhere, basically. If you feel like you've stuck to it 100%, that's great, but there could be some contamination that we don't know about. Uh-oh, some pesky gluten has crept into Maisie's diet. If you get in a bit of the runs, have a sort of think about what have you eaten in the last 24 hours. Right. Keep a little diary if you need to, keep okay. a little notepad, and it might be over time when we start to see more of a pattern. I found out that my results had 
gone up at quite a steep hill so we're just under 64 so i can't eat oats which i'm pretty disappointed about Maisie's done well keeping an eye on her diet so far but there's a little bit more work to do see you later bye Ouch. meanwhile my ouch bleepers busily beeping get a wriggle on chris it's harry who has a condition which means he has trouble eating hello dr press how are you Fine. What is your question? What is an orthophagitis? That is a very good question. Well, what's the diagnosis, Doc? But I think it sounds like you have a case of... I want to know if Dr Chris knows what an esophagitis is itis. Ooh, a double-itis. You know that an esophagus is the tube that links your mouth to your stomach. So, whenever something in your body is inflamed, we put itis on the end of it. And in your case, you have an esophagus that's inflamed, so we call it an esophagitis. And so when Harry eats, his esophagus swells up and food can't get down it, and he feels very, very poorly indeed. So, Harry, can you show me how the doctors have fixed the fact that you can't eat food using your mouth? And they put a mini button in there. A mini button? So what's a mini button? Wow. So that is now a hole going straight inside your stomach. Yes. So what kind of food do you have through the hole? Just a special type of milk and some medicine. And that's how you stay big and strong, even though yeah. you can't swallow stuff? Yeah. Now that's pretty amazing. OK, well, you've really taught me something. You did such a good job, I'm giving you an Operation Out sticker. Thank you. Bye. Job done for today. Clinic closed. Mm? Did you know that the loudest burp ever recorded was over a hundred decibels. That's louder than a tractor. Wow! Excuse me! Sand. Amazing people do lots of important jobs inside and outside hospitals that help to keep you safe. But what will happen when we have a go? I feel a bit silly. This is Operation Takeover. Can you guess who today's hospital hero is? Well, I'll give you a clue. You might see them when your tummy's doing this. They might wear one of these. And they work with lots and lots of this. Food! Chris, this is going to be the best hospital takeover challenge yet. I mean, who can complain about having to eat all this Can't. yummy... We're not here to eat, are we? We're here to find out about the amazing people that work in the hospital canteen. Oh, yeah. We're about to take over the job of today's heroes, executive chef Simon and restaurant supervisor Donna. They're on the front line at Alderhey Hospital Restaurant, where they serve around 500 meals a day to patients, their families and staff. Great pleasure. This is different to a normal restaurant in the people who are in a hospital usually have something to worry about or some problem. That's why they've come. Sometimes parents are looking to get away from the bedside. In the restaurant, it's a friendly face for them to speak to. And what about the serving food? Do you get any tricky situations there? Yeah, some people have allergies. It could be a life or death situation with the allergy. So the stakes are quite high. Stakes are high. That was good, that was good. To find out what makes a good canteen worker, we need to talk to some customers. So, Ruby, you've been coming to the Older Hay Canteen yeah. for how many years now? Uh, eight. So you know this canteen pretty well. Yeah. I think it's nice that they want to know about me and make me feel a bit better. Kira, have you got any tips? You've got to be nice to the people. What do you think would be the worst thing that we could do? Maybe set the place on fire. Who do you think is more likely to do that, me or Chris? You. What? Because you're all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ruby and Kira. We've learned just how important the hospital canteen is for patients and their families. But will our attempts to be hospital servers go as well as fish goes with chips? Or will we make a real dog's dinner out of it? Get it? <laughs> Good, eh? Get it? It's time for us to take over as canteen workers. Your takeover challenge today is you're going to serve the special, which is a hot salad with chicken and bacon. Sounds like a piece of cake. No, it's a hot chicken and bacon salad. What? Oh. Here we go. First, Simon gives us a quick demonstration on the best way to serve our salads. We're putting six pieces of chicken. We're going to be judged on portion size, speed, and customer communication. Don't forget to ask about allergies. The two allergens that we have in this meal here is we have mustard in the dressing and we have gluten in the croutons. OK, cool. How's that? That looks fantastic. Donna and Simon will be checking our every move. 
The key to a good hot salad, Chris, is showmanship. People want flair, excitement, speed. I might try and set it on fire. What, no, Zan, the key to a good salad is hygiene. Get your finger out of your ear. Disgusting. Zan's up first. How are you doing today? Very well, thank you. And who are you with? This is my son, William. Hey, William. Are you allergic to anything? No. Good communication, Zand. You remembered the allergies. <laughs> now, how does it look, Williams? Does it look edible? That's great. Thank you very much. You've done a good job. Done very well. Uh, that was his first salad. Portion size was slightly out. Look, I hope your lad does well with this operation. I'm sure he will. Zand's speeding through it. Yeah, yeah. He's done it really fast, really well. Um, it looks good and really thorough, so I'm happy with it. Here we go. Right. How am I doing tossing the salad? Does that look right? Uh, we hopefully we kept it in the bowl. <laughs> Oh, dear. I'm sure I'll do better than that. Well, go on, then, Chris. It's your turn. Do you have any allergies? No. No. Great communication, Chris. Bit of tomato, bit of this lettuce, cucumber. He's doing fine. He's picking it up, but he's doing a little bit too much chatting. She's got a point. OK, so we can give six pieces of chicken. <laughs> One, two, three. Speed up. We haven't got all day. Have you got any allergies? No, 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 no. Lots of onion? Uh, Got well, no meetings this afternoon? Uh, just a few. <laughs> Uh-oh, time's up. There was a spare one. Put the food down, Zand. We're ready for the verdict. I think overall you both did very, very well. Portion size. Zand, you wasn't as good on the portion size. Uh, the reason being is that when you start to shake your salad, a little bit landed on the floor. It was like he was doing a dance behind the counter. I wanted to put on a bit of a show, to be honest. I felt like... People don't want shows on, they want salad. Speed-wise, unfortunately, Chris, you was quite slow. But one person's done too much chatting. And the winner of the challenge is... For Simon, it's a draw, but the clear winner for Donna is Dr Zand. Way! Well, well done, Zand, on a narrow victory. But I think what we both learned today is just what an important job the hospital catering department does. And I think, to be honest, we should leave it to the professionals. Thank you very much. I wonder if there's any salad left. Hi, I'm Roseanne, and in the past, I've suffered with an eating disorder called anorexia nervosa. The way I describe anorexia is like if someone has a real fear of spiders. My fear at the time was food. So I'd lost someone really close to me and had other things going on, especially exams. Everything else in my life was out of control and that was the one thing I could control. I could control what I ate, when I ate. I didn't tell anyone at all. I'd heard other people talking about people with mental illness in a really negative way, being called attention seekers, and I didn't want attention from it, so the best way was not to say anything. Well, I didn't tell anyone until I got told I was going into hospital. But once I did open up, and to start with, it was through letter writing and songwriting. It became so much easier for me to talk to other people, knowing my parents there by my side if I needed it was really, really helpful. Now I realise you've got to let people in and I let them help me when I couldn't help myself. Lunchtime, one of Zahn's favourite parts of the day. Yes! Extra cheesy fries with a mango salsa on the side, please, Chris. Now, you probably know that the food you eat can affect your physical health. But did you know that it also affects your mood and your mental health? I've lined up a few volunteers to show you just how big the effect is. Meet Poppy, Lila, Jack, Molly, Samuel and Isaac. Thank you all for helping me with this experiment. I want you to follow two different diets. A good diet for two days and a bad diet for two days. For the first two days, you'll all be eating healthy stuff like green veg, oily fish, nuts, and fruit. And for those two days you're on the good diet, you're going to drink nothing but clear water. And then for two days, we're going to get you to eat a bad diet, including pizza, biscuits, sweets, chocolate, donuts. Which diet are you looking forward to? Oh, I must say I'm looking forward to the unhealthy diet. Definitely the unhealthy diet. Unhealthy because it's an excuse to eat 
unhealthily. I don't blame them. Surely everyone wants a donut for breakfast. You say that, Zand, but what my volunteers don't know is that the healthier diet is more than just healthy. It's a brain food diet. Your brain needs key minerals and vitamins to produce the chemicals which keep you focused and feeling good, such as B vitamins in the veg, zinc in the nuts, and omega-3 in the oily fish. The science sounds great, but what happened in reality? Hi, this is the first of two healthy days. I'm not really looking forward to it because it's going to be bad. I just had my healthy breakfast and it was very nice. Lunch, I had the mackerel better than I expected, actually. I tried the mackerel pasta. It wasn't that good. I don't really like mackerel. It tasted a bit weird, but it's been about an hour and a half since dinner and I still feel full. feel great. I felt great for it the whole day. I think the healthy food is actually doing something. I find that revision is a lot easier when I've eaten a good meal. Although not everybody loved the taste, the brain food diet has successfully kept our volunteers happy, energised and able to concentrate. But what about the unhealthy diet? Would it really make that much difference to their mental health? Well, there aren't many vitamins and minerals on this side of the table. These items are packed with saturated fat and sugars. Let's see what happens. So this is day one of the unhealthy day. I think this is the best diet ever. So I'm looking forward to this and I really like pizza. And I've just had dinner, which was fish, fish and chips, but I had sausage and chips because I prefer that. I was quite hyper. I couldn't focus on what I was doing. I feel quite irritable and I just don't feel well at all. I keep on getting headaches and I get really, really easily distracted. After that, I felt quite hungry. I'm really hungry at the moment. My skin has become greasy and I've developed spots. After my sugar high, I felt really, really tired. I'm feeling tired. Everyone loved the taste and the initial burst of energy, but then the unhealthy diet swiftly brought everyone down. They ended up tired, grumpy, hungry, and even a bit spotty. In just two days, all of our volunteers reported feeling better, not just in their bodies, but also in their minds on the healthy diet. So if you're feeling stressed, why not have a go? Chances are you'll feel better for it.